Welcome to today's presentation on Notable, um, where we'll be hearing how using Notable in Python and business analytics courses has created huge efficiencies. Um, James Stix and Guy Stevenson are here from Adina. James will be giving a short introduction about Notable, and Guy will be monitoring the chat for questions. They'll then be handing over to Dr. Pavel Wozachowski, who is a lecturer in programming for business at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I heard Pavel talk about Notable last July, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing him and what he has to say today. Um, this webinar is being run in conjunction with the chess team at JISC, of which I'm a member. So my name is Anna Clough, and I'm the software licensing manager for the Chess Notable Agreement, which is how the software is licensed for further and higher education. Um, I'm just going to say a couple of sentences about the license agreement and then hand over to James. Um, so James, if you can click on that web link, please. Okay. Hopefully that, you can see. That's not switched to the website. I think it might be to do with the PowerPoint presentation. There we go. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So in front of you, you've got the, um, the web pages for the Chess Notable Agreement. So just a bit of background about Chess, and um, I'll be brief. <laughs> um, Chess is the software licensing branch of JISC, and our website URL is really easy to remember. So it's www.chess.ac.uk. Um, information about all of the software agreements we offer is structured in the same way, with a series of tabs outlining aspects of each agreement. So the Chess Notable Agreement is currently available to purchase until the 29th of November 2023, and it offers banded named user license pricing with the option to, subs to subscribe for either a one or a three year term from sign up. Um, members of staff who are responsible for licensing at your institution can register for a chest account and that allows them to see the agreement pricing and also place orders online. We can also send pricing information out to the, those of you who are interested if you don't have access. If you have any questions about the license agreement, either now or going forwards, please feel free to put them in the meeting chat or email me afterwards. The presentation slides have our contact details on and will be sent around after the meeting. Um, I'm going to hand over to James now and sit back and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm just going to go back to sharing the presentation. There we go. So once again, thank you very much, Anna, and, and thanks everyone for, for coming and joining us today. Uh, so I'm very much pleased to be here today with, um, with Pavel Ochochowski coming uh, as well uh, from the University of Edinburgh Business School. And I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the Notable service from Adina before handing over to, to Pavel. Um, so Notable itself is a cloud-based computational notebook service uh, that integrates directly into your virtual learning environment. It was developed by Edina, the Center for Digital Expertise that is part of the University of Edinburgh. And it was very much co-created with academics and learning technologists themselves to, to gather the requests from, from them and to hear what they wanted for, uh, for this type of service. Um, it was initially really built on the Jupyter Notebook technology, uh, which, uh, which provides an intuitive environment for teaching coding in Python particularly. Uh, but Notable also supports other programming languages, uh, including R and their R Studio user interface and other languages as well. Uh, it's the perfect tool for teaching coding to, to novices, but also to specialists alike. Um, and as Anna mentioned, we'll be taking any questions you might have at the end for any particular use cases that you might have in mind, um, or just as, you, as we describe the service in some more detail. Um, Notable is currently being used uh, across the University of Edinburgh and other universities as well through test agreement subscriptions. And it's currently being used by universities to teach coding in a variety of subjects, including law, geosciences, mathematics, um, computing science and business, as Pavel will, uh, will speak to in just a minute or two. Um, at the University of Edinburgh, it's been used across 10 departments with over 10,000 users accessing Notable in the last few months. Um, and um, I'm delighted now to, to have a, a University of Edinburgh professor, uh, Pavel from the Business School, to, to talk to us about their experiences using Notable and, uh, and speak a little bit to, to what they found the service to be like um, in the virtual classroom during the last, uh, the last year or two in these crazy times. Um, so now I'll pass it over to Pavel, and um, I'll be happy to take any questions on the service um, at the end. So uh, thank you very much, Pavel, and um, over to you. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me, James uh, and Anne. Uh, I'll try to share my screen. You know how the, the more technologically enabled you are, the more likely computer is to crash in front of you. Right, you should see a slide uh, and my red mouse wiggling around it. Uh, can someone confirm that you see that? 
Absolutely, Pavel. That's grand. Hey ho. Hey ho. So, <clears throat> uh, my name is Pavel Ozhakovsky. Um, yes, I live with a surname that's unpronounceable. The nice thing is it means walnuts. So, you know, uh, it, it's a simple meaning, unpronounceable spelling. Um, I lecture at business school uh, of Edinburgh Uni, uh, but in a minute, I'll talk to you a little bit about my context because I strongly believe that uh, both programming is a storytelling exercise and teaching code or teaching any technical skill really is, is not that different from teaching someone to perform a magic trick or tell a joke. But also I'll, uh, I believe that where I come from and my priorities really inform my choice of tools. So I want you to understand why uh, I'm a groupie of, of Notable. Uh, I'll talk uh, about the no drama coding environment. I'll talk a little bit uh, about giving students feedback and also driving a course, driving someone's learning uh, with the feedback. I'll talk about the file management because that's that's often uh, a, a dramatic angle uh, of teaching uh, code. I'll talk about the user experience of teaching. So how does it feel a little bit from the point of view of a student um, and, and um, you know, the afterlife of teaching and what happens after the course uh, is finished. Um, I'll try to wrap this up in, I don't actually remember how many minutes uh, I'm allowed to have. I'll try to wrap it up in 20 minutes um, and uh, I'm lo really looking forward to your questions at the end. Uh, I've been doing this, this sort of uh, te teaching this way for about three years now, so I have a lot of uh, cute things to tell and some better scars. Um, so first my context. You might know who this little fella is. Uh, there's 20 years difference between the first Pikachu game and the current Pikachu game. And what I really, really strongly believe is that all of those 18 or 19 games that happened in the middle, they really made us culturally accustomed to this little uh, electric rat. Um, and it would be quite silly to skip the games in the middle. It, like, it just wouldn't be the same experience if we skipped from the, the uh, eight bit pixelated Pikachu to that one that we catch on the street. So I'm going to tell you where I come from. This was my previous job before Edinburgh University Business School. Uh, I taught in a, in a coding bootcamp uh, that has few campuses around Scotland, but the benefit, so this is my classroom. This is where I would teach 20 students for four months sort of from nothing and I would teach them coding. Notice what's on the table. I'm not sure if I can zoom these slides without breaking everything. Every student is giving the same identical MacBook as they enter on the first day of school. So I can completely trust that when I tell my students to open a file or, you know, and software is the same as well. So when I tell them to open a file to run a piece of code, it's just going to work because I know they all have one and the same um, MacBook. So then when my students, uh, another thing that sort of was important for me then, this is this is to my students working on a piece of code, notice what they're doing. They, they basically will take turn passing the laptop around and doodling. And I'll tell you a little bit about this experience. It's called pair programming. And I'll tell you how uh, Notable really enabled me to, to, to do this. This is, this is a typical day at school where we would just discuss things uh, through, but we are in one room and also the, the in individual sort of identical computers were important. This is Edinburgh University. A computing lab. Again, each student has the same computer. It's all installed for them in there. But obviously, this is how my course worked three years ago. Uh, and as you uh, the are aware, uh, last years were very, very different. So suddenly, when even just one of these students pulls out their own laptop because they are remotely present, uh, then suddenly uh, complexities do show up. So this is the context. This is just a massive list of courses that I teach right now using Notable. Primarily it's stuff within business school and my my sort of niche, like the, the place where I find myself happiest and my, my students find themselves happiest with me is teaching fundamentals. So I'm teaching people who've never programmed before, who've never sort of used computer. They wouldn't know how to do tech support to themselves, for example. Um, but also I'm teaching within Edinburgh Futures Institute, and this is us delivering, uh, you know, programming and sort of text mining courses to people from literature, from politics, uh, from history uh, departments. Uh, and now also from this semester, I'm teaching uh, as part of Usher, Usher Institute and DDI, and that's basically to med medical students. So all, all of these people have one thing in common is that, uh, you know, this is the beginning of their journey and they have more important things to do than do a PhD in computer science to learn how to run a file uh, or download a folder. 
Um, this is my favorite, like the most favorite uh, part of, of, of using Notable, to, of using this sort of virtual computer uh, concept that, again, every student has works technically on the same machine. Even if they are sitting on their own laptops, I have some students who use iPads to code uh, with Notable. It literally does not matter as long as it has a web browser. For me, that was just a complete revelation because traditionally what would have happened um, like my, my friends are just finishing to deliver some courses and it's week, it was week 10 and they were still solving technical problems of their students. Uh, you know, still someone couldn't install something, still someone couldn't download or open a particular file because obviously they had, you know, Macs, Windows, Linux machines, iPads even. So there was this experience of teaching tech was always experience of never ending tech support. Like I, I would have to hire for a, a group of 30 students, I would have to have an extra teaching assistant just to deal with this drama. Now we're delivering courses to 100, 200, 300 students and literally within 10 minutes, they're all looking at code, they're all solving the code. And that's because of these distributed uh, sort of uh, uh, cloud hosted computers that the, the Notable uh, team uh, have built. And that's, and that's amazing. So the, the fact that it's compatible with literally any device that a student has and throws at them is amazing. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the admin rights because the nice thing is each of these students can install whatever on their sort of virtual computer because it's um, they'll be able to sort of rinse and reset in between courses, even in between classes. So there's nothing you can really break. So I'm almost where I started. I'm almost in a room where every student has access to the same identical setup, so I don't have to spend time uh, doing stuff. Um, if you're not a, a geeky sort of uh, Python -y person, this is gibberish for you. But what I want to point to you is some words that are luckily in English. This is a, a, literally the first top 10 lines of my Jupyter notebook I, I teach for, for teaching. Student can import some stuff that's already within the notable world. Student can, within one line, just by running this, they can download extra data, extra information, extra sort of capacities. So if that was your phone, it's like downloading an extra app, but student doesn't have to type it, they just run it. And this, for those of you who know what PIP is, um, this means that students can also actually upgrade their computer. It's almost like plugging in an, another graphical card or a bigger hard drive. And this all can happen within minutes. And I don't have to explain to students how to do it. Just to, for comparison, in all times, I would literally have to type this stuff into their terminal. You know, terminal, it looks like Matrix movie, so sort of black and white uh, text. This is an incredible time saving uh, 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 situation, and it gives me capacity to deploy my time and my teaching assistant's time into actual teaching. And I do talk very quickly, and I'm aware I have a funky accent, so I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Um, Next thing I would like to talk to you about is how um, giving feedback, and this is some of it is relevant to Notable, and some of it is relevant to the pieces of software that they managed, that the Edina team managed to sort of bundle into it. Uh, some of it is the Jupyter Notebook thing, uh, which is uh, when I explain to people what Jupyter Notebook is, it's an interactive PDF. Uh, imagine you, you just get a PDF file, you know, and normally you scroll it up and down and read it. Uh, but in this particular PDF, if there's a piece of code in it, you can edit that piece of code and you can run it. So it's it's basically a PDF within which the, the, the learning, the coding can happen. Uh, so I'll talk about giving the students feedback in all sorts of ways. So this is an example of one of the notebooks. It's, you know, there's this, there's this notable interface, Dara Dara. I'll, I'll geek out a little bit later about some of my favorite bits, but what I want to bring your attention to is this blue, air, blue area here. So imagine I'm teaching, you know, 150 students or indeed these days because I'm using a lot of flipped classroom learning. Uh, they do these exercises at home. So look, look at what's happening. This is student clicking the blue thing. Oh, someone has a mic on and the super echo. Um, so what happens here within the notes, I can hide hints for students. So me as a student, if I get lost because I'm at home uh, and I'm doing this at my own time, I can sort of unlock hints from the teachers. Another thing that we do a lot, and it's part of the philosophy. So this is an exercise that a student has to do. Um, again, if you're not a coder, 
I try to make it as English as possible. Given list of cities, just give me their names type of thing. And this is something that, uh, again, I'm designing this so the student can partake in my courses, in our courses from home. And I literally have, I tell them what's expected. I tell them what their code produced. And then we just assert, you know, like confirm whether what they're expected is the same as their actual thing. Why I'm even showing this to you is because to have this working prior, I would need weeks uh, in a small group of 20, 20, 30 students. Now it's just within minutes, I have the whole class interacting with their stuff, having sort of um, having what's expected of them on a table. This is another before and after just to, to show you. So this is what a student sees. Student sees basically an, a, a placeholder, like an empty bit. This is where your code is going to be, you know, uh, and then this is what I write as a teacher. I write them and I basically in, in Notable, there's this sort of system of little hiding tricks, hiding, uh, uh, hiding abilities that I can say I, I write my solutions here, you know, and when it's given to the student, the solution vanishes. So the student only gets an empty gap and they, they, they basically have to fill it in. Why that is important is that me as a teacher, I don't need to have two copies of the same class notes. You probably have experience of that where you have, you know, a lab sheet with solutions and lab sheet without solutions. I don't need to have two copies. I have just my master copy and I use these special tags that then Notable will just sort of automatically hide for students. And then when students find get given the solutions, it gets unhidden. It's it's simple, but again, it's lovely and it's not a drop down. It's not a system specific thing. If one day I move on to a different system or a student opens it in a different sort of uh, Python learning environment. These will be there. It's not bound uh, and, and that's uh, I'll talk a little bit about this uh, in the afterlife. This uh, this works. Uh, Notable makes it work, but you're not married to uh, Notable forever because the Jupyter notebook is much more sort of um, uh, widely used as a system, which is amazing. It means that they really respect me as a teacher that I want to be with them, not because they bound me in some sort of, you know, uh, golden handcuffs of, of features, uh, but rather they enable me to be uh, to be mobile. And that that's amazing. I, I really respect that and I feel respected. And that's why I've been using this for years. So another there's other cool things that I'll just mention a little bit in those tests. You know, this is expected. This this is what you did. You get to put individual points. So in tests and, and, and homeworks and write, uh, you're allowed to say, OK, ability to do this in code is five points. Ability, ability to do this in code is 10 points, whatever. So I've been using uh, Notable to run all of my homeworks and assignments and exams uh, over the last two years. And they it has uh, tackled very bravely and efficiently. You know, the, the time pressure, the ability to be sort of strict and actually absolutely for sure work. You know, when I have a room of 100 students, it does work and it does deliver consistently. So that's fantastic. Uh, so the fact I can assign a particular bits of uh, uh, activities uh, to a particular amount of points and then, you know, the, the mark is calculated. That's wonderful. It supports the, the sort of me marking some some uh, tasks automatically like, OK, the answer should be 10. And if it isn't 10, you don't get points. Uh, and some uh, exercises I can hand mark, you know, when when students write a little report, you know, or a sentence explaining what does the graph do. That's also supported. That's, that's quite nice. I really like how that's handled. I think I have a slide when I'll show you a little bit of that, but I think it's also quite uh, well shown on, on their page. Uh, and finally, the, there's a build in uh, and it showed up, I think, last year, uh, which is wonderful. There's a built in ability for me to send feedback to in each individual students uh, through Notable. So in the same place where student uh, gets their homeworks and in the same way uh, place where they sold it, they get my feedback and their points, which is lovely. And for me, the, the reason why I've put this there, a part of the fact that this, this is fantastic, um, is that this, this, this didn't used to be there. This was not in as part of Notable because they were still building the, the infrastructure. And, and I remember telling them a few times, like, this would be amazing. This would be a game changer where I can just, with a press of a button, give the students the feedback. So the team just sat down and did it. 
uh, and this is amazing. This is one of the reasons I like working with the team because they do um, they do sort of actively add stuff. Uh, there's one feature I'm I still haven't seen it. I'm about to see it, but I'm so excited uh, about, and I do will mention it in a minute. Right, we're sort of halfway through. Uh, the managing files. I don't know if you know. Um, you know, I, I expect most of you know what a folder is, but we are entering. Uh, a student body right now, so you know people who are uh, 18, 19, 20 come to the to the uni. Um, their mobile phone often was their first and uttermost um, digital device, which is beautiful and amazing. But also, it means that some concepts that are sort of quite familiar to to people, uh, you know, who had to type everything, um, is uh, things like files and folders. Like it's it almost doesn't matter anymore if I download a file as long as I can see something on my screen, right? Um, so more and more there, there's there's stuff that that we have to explain as teachers or make sure that it's not a problem. And it's just the whole suite of these uh, of these extra challenges they get solved by the way the the notable um, deal with things. So I'll talk a little bit about uploading and downloading files. I'll talk about GitHub. Uh, and the one button clone, uh, which uh, it totally deserves a heart emoji. It's 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 game changing uh, for the, the 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 hours of tech support that I had to provide to my students in the past, and now it just happens automatically. This is this is just golden. Uh, if you don't know what a GitHub is, GitHub you you might know what the Dropbox is. You know the place where you want to send someone a big file, you sort of pop it in there. It's like a website for storage. Uh, um, but really good metaphor for GitHub, it's a Facebook for programming code. You know, like when Facebook, you put all your photos and, you know, uh, all of your privacy uh, in there. I can share photos through, you know, or point someone to my photos on Facebook is the same with code on GitHub. I can point a bunch of students to my code that lives on this website. And it's the biggest resource of that type on the planet right now. Uh, and Notable has basically a button. They'll just do it for you. Uh, which is fantastic. It's sort of like uh, check if there are any new notes button and students just click it every day and they get new notes if I've uploaded some new ones. Um, the sandbox admin rights. So for those of you who know what I'm what I'm talking about, this is where if you want to install something on your own machine. Now I'm teaching a bunch of NHS staff uh, through the through Asher Institute and through the uh, medical school and their work laptops, uh, so the ones that are given by NHS, for obvious reasons are completely, uh, like they, they cannot install anything. They cannot even install a, a plugin to their web browser. Like it's all absolutely uh, for safety and security reasons, it's, it's untouchable. The laptop itself, it has to stay the way uh, they got it, which means that they cannot install anything. So if they wanna learn about new types of draw graphs, in Python, you know, or the new way of text mining, they cannot install that ability on their computer. So suddenly, because on the Notable, they have all of the admin rights they can possibly imagine, this is game changing, because I suddenly have people who are used to not being able to do stuff, who suddenly are able to do everything. And, you know, and literally at the end of the class, you can rinse and repeat. They, they can, um, again, to, to achieve the same level of security, they can just sort of clear it up. Uh, the, their, their virtual computer, which is fantastic. Um, so I've showed you this one, but I'm showing this again because this this is one of the most game changing situations, uh, especially for the NHS staff. And we've done some work with external contractors um, where they were saying, oh, our safety team will just not let us install anything on our computers. And then I can tell that is so not a problem because we can just run this piece of code. It will download stuff for you install things on your computer and it's going to work. Right, one of the last things I wanted to talk to you about is the user experience of teaching and learning. So how does a student enter into this, this virtual programming world? Uh, how do I explain it to students? You know, what if student is using this system for a few different courses? What if they're learning Python on this course and drawing things in Python on another course and R on yet another course, which is currently the, the, the case in med school where are we delivering this um so how how does this 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 system how does notable change in response to what course you have in mind and that's quite cool um the again the the winning strategy is that within you know within five ten minutes i have 
200 students looking at the code, solving simple puzzles from the very moment I told them how to do it. It's absolutely life changing. The pair programming, this is my particular uh, geekiness, uh, but I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about the experience of coding with someone. Remember that photo from the beginning of my uh, slides where there were two uh, students sitting at the table, passing the laptop around and coding together? Um, you know, now a bunch of the teaching is delivered online. And even if it's not online, it's still a bit neh about uh, teaching, uh, touching each other's keyboards and, you know, passing objects around. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And um, yeah, that's what I'm excited about. So this is an example of one of my courses. Learn is Edinburgh University's virtual learning environment, you know, where all the notes and courses are for students. So this is my fundamentals of programming for business applications. And there on the side, the student has access to their badge uh, notebooks. I'll mention very, very briefly what badges are, but they are sort of one hour long chunks of learning that can happen. A student can go into the badge notebooks and then they can open their virtual computer. The, I, just for simplicity, that's what I call notables um, on my courses. So a student clicks it and boom, this is their computer. They have their hard drive, they have their notes, they have their assignments tab, which is quite important. And this is my favorite button, uh, plus Git repo. This is a button that synchronizes the notes that I've released to them uh, with what the student sees on their computer. So every week I add new chunk of notes and uh, a student every, every week, student just has to click this button and the new new, new notes just magically appear uh, on their computer. And it's so smart in the way it's done that if a student already solved some puzzles and already uh, completed some courses, their work is never overwritten by what I've uploaded. And my work is sort of always topped up to what, to what they have. It's just very uh, nicely solved. And that's a feature of GitHub. Uh, this is just to show you, this is an example of how students uh, work on their assignments. When student opens this system, this Notable thing, uh, from their learning environment, the, the Notable knows from which course they entered it, right? So if I'm, I'm doing an R course and a Python course and another Python course, it will know where I came from. It's sort of, uh, some people call it breadcrumbs, you know, like Hansel and Gretel stuff. The, the system knows where I came from, it knows my context. So I will only see the assignments and homeworks for this particular course. So me as a student, I can fetch uh, the new assignment, say there's a week 10 assignment. Indeed, when I'm done doing it, I can validate it. And this is for me as a teacher, I can include sort of uh, like sort of sanity checks of, um, oh, don't forget there's the 10th exercise, you know, it's like because often we all have experience of sending an email which was supposed to have an attached file and we forgot to attach this file, right? So this is the type of the validate button does that for you. It does just does the checking. Did you actually complete all the exercises? It doesn't check if they're correct. It checks if you did have an attempt. And then me as a student, I submit. And then finally, then the time passes where, where me and my team will mark it. And then when it's all marked, students can just fetch their feedback from the system. So we're getting quite close to this interaction. Right, so in the next few minutes, I'll talk to you very briefly about well, not very briefly because I'm so passionate about it. I'll talk to you about pair programming, but that's for, for me, that was one of the initial reasons why uh, I engaged with the Notable team. I wanted a very, very smooth experience of two people discussing their code, negotiating what they want to do, very often doodle uh, about it. This is how pair programming looks like, um, that you have two students trying to work, well, working together, um, but only one of them operates the keyboard. And this, the metaphor is a little bit like driving a car. So you have a driver, you know, the person who turns the wheel and presses all the buttons. And then you have a navigator, the person with a rough idea where we're going. Someone looking out right and left into oncoming cars and pedestrians and cyclists. Um, so this is, this is what a pair programming is. But primarily the idea is that each student has someone to talk to. And it doesn't matter that that person you talk to is not a teacher, is not a trained programmer, whatever. It actually is beneficial that they're both learning, even if they're learning at slightly, slightly different level. And this comes from the fact that uh, you only understand something if you can describe it to another human. Um, and that's why the, the two of them would be talking and every now and then, roughly every 15 minutes on my courses, they change the keyboard. So if you were the person sort of typing uh, versus the person who was uh, navigating, you take turns and you 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 have capacity to, to work with both roles. Uh, Rubber Duck 
that's a long story, but rubber duck is a patron animal of all programmers, as you, as you might know. And that's because sometimes if you don't have an, an actual human to talk to, it's enough to put a little rubber duck next to your monitor and try to talk to them. You might already get some of the benefits. So as I'm saying, every 10, 15 minutes, they would be switching. And thanks to Notable, and thanks to some features that they've been building in over the last few years, when we had to switch to online teaching, and then later hybrid teaching, it's it's actually quite easy and notable, um, easy and doable, where they pass sort of the virtual keyboard and students have access to the same virtual computer, right? So they, instead of passing an actual laptop around, they're passing access rights to the same virtual laptop and they just work on video. Um, this is, uh, I just really love this GIF uh, that we made, so I'm going to show it to you to distract you, but primarily we tried, we worked with Notable and with this this sort of pair working practice in person, where it's two people in one lab. We worked with it online, and over the last few months with the Edinburgh Futures Institute, we work with it uh, in a hybrid environment, where one student is in the room with us, uh, with the teaching buddy, and, and the other students or some students have capa capacity to be um, uh, remotely, wherever, wherever it is uh, that they need to be. Um, and this is just this is just something like we've been gathering over the last three years a gigantic amount of feedback from students just to see how it works for them, where are the weaknesses of the system, where are its strengths, and how can we make it better. So this is every hour each student was giving us little X on these uh, on these sort of scales. This is how it worked with our with our hybrid teaching course. So this was when two, these two students are working on their separate laptops hooked up to a monitor, but using Notable again very quickly. And this is when the pairs were room and room. While this was a situation where these students are actually working with another student who's remote. So there's someone working with this person, someone out there working with this person and so forth. So these are the students that are working across sort of the, the digital boundary um, and the teaching that the sort of the instructors us we're cruising through the room, but virtually speaking. Again, uh, for us, it was very, very simple to just pop in and 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 start working with them. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, the the last thing I can skim over or not uh, is that the notable, at least for me, it's not the solution. I mean, I, I I don't particularly care how we do it. I just want it done and I want the student's experience to be as best as possible. So really it is exciting and you know I'm geeky uh, and, and sort of uh, uh, I have a PhD in computer science so some parts of this solution do excite me but really what excites me the most is the things I can build on top of this. So I'm going to give you a very very uh, quick snippet of what are the type of things you can then build on top of it without the PhD in computer science. And that's that's sort of the, the magical uh, benefit of, of sort of just plug and play, no setup uh, environments like these virtual computers. So, you know, the, they what they provide you, let's imagine this is a vegetarian burger, uh, they provide you with tools and then it's up to you to assemble your dream course. Um, so what I'm using is, is, is something called badges. And again, without Notable, it would be very, very hard to do it. Badge is a one hour long piece of knowledge where a student watches a short video, reads some code, then completes some coding exercises, and then writes a tweet about it. You know, the type of tweet, if you have kids at school, you know what I'm talking about, the three stars and a wish uh, type of tweet where they list three things they learned from this experience and one thing they wish understood better. So this, is, this experience takes about an hour, hour and a half and combines into a badge. And by now, um, I'm building a bunch of badges. We have sort of 25 across different courses, and then we can mix and match and build new courses from these badges. Um, the plan is uh, we're currently working on putting them on Creative Commons license. So most of these badges will be available to people this summer. But what I then would gonna do, I would take you know five of the badges and a computer lab, so a set of exercises for a pair of students to do. And I would call this you know one week of learning. Then what I'm gonna do, I would combine this sort of one week of learning and another week of learning, and then a big pair X sort of uh, homework, like an assignment when students would work. And then that's combined into one block of learning, sort of like a third of semester uh, chunk. And then I assemble my course, my 11 week course from these smaller chunks 
and they finally get an individual exam at the end. Why I'm showing this to you? Because through and through, this is only possible because I can distribute these badges at the click of a button to every student immediately. It's because they can work in pairs without, you know, at their own time, without me needing to set up their computers and be constantly there to help them. Because the marking is so easy and it's so built into the system, um, and the marking can involve, you know, is the answer 10 or not? But also, can you write me some descriptions of stuff? So there are closed questions and open questions. So my point is, this is just how I build my courses, but it's through and through only possible because how how this is done. I think this is basically it. This was my last slide, but I've spoken about absolutely everything I had to say <laughs> already. So thank you for hearing me. I hope uh, you understood my uh, very quick and sometimes rambly uh, chats. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to your questions and I'm looking to, uh, I'm, what I'm really, really looking forward to, actually I'll stop sharing my screen now, is seeing where you're gonna take this. Because the with these type of tools, I'm not gonna quote Spider-Man, but we all, uh, you know, know this, it's in place. Uh, with these type of tools, you have the power and you can really, really build some really cool teaching. Uh, and this can be teaching in the uni or in school, uh, whatever. So um, I'm excited to be here and I'm really, really excited to uh, hearing from you all. Yay, thanks for listening to me. So that was me, Paweł Orzechowski, and, and there's even my name. Yay, thanks James for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paweł. That was um, fantastic. That was so informative and uh, I really, um, I really left that with with feeling like students can start working with code in seconds. And uh, I, I really appreciated your uh, extreme customizing points that you've made, made, but also how you can access Notable, um, whether you come at it from a PhD in computing science like yourself, <laughs> or you're coming at it from uh, an MSc in something that's more unrelated or more, you know, whatever your background might be, you know, being able to to think through through different um, examples. So uh, um, we, we were capturing some of the questions that were coming in through the presentation, Pavel, we have a couple. Um, I think the, the first one that was asked was really about um, VLE grade passback. Um, and if you have any any, exam any examples with that or any experience or thoughts with that so far with Notable. VLE uh, grades. Yeah, so I think it? the question was, can the points for tests be passed into a VLE? Um, what I, I I do it manually through my team, uh, through my admin team, but I don't know. I, th I think there was a, a chat about this being a feature. So what happens for me is when they're marked, I uh, export them into Excel spreadsheet and send it to my admin team, and then admin team puts it into VLE. Um, so I don't actually know. James, you answered that one. Yeah, so, uh, so from our side, um, our, our two cents on that, um, are that grade passback is a feature that is currently being developed for the technology that connects Notable into a VLE. Um, so right now, the, um, the the features for grading and for um, sending assignments and, and points back to your students allows you for you to do that through uh, Notable, uh, including the auto grading features. Um, so moving that back into your VLE is going to be the next step of our development, and we're looking to implement that over over this summer, summer 2022. Cool. What other questions do we have? Let's see. So um, there is a question about uh, the functionality for assignments being uh, using MB Grader, and, and I provided some information on that and how um, um, and to Notable is um, is making use of MB Grader as an add-on tool with it and, and pointing to some of the upcoming features that that is enabling, such as multiple markers, um, uh, just uh, in case that might be of, of relevance here and um, anything you might want to, to, to note on that, Pavel. Um, yeah, so so this is something I mentioned in, in, in my chat. The NB Grader, I think, is the open source project that the Notable team sort of plugged into the system. So this is something that it does not come out of the box and they, they've done it. And I really like it because um, if for whatever reason I had to deliver this course offline, you know, that the student downloads it and does it on a train or, or wherever they want to be, I can find a way to for the for the NB Grader um, uh, integration to also happen there. So f for me, like I was saying, for me, that's 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 uh, that's a strength that um, that it's using a standard rather than. I mean, I'm not I'm not. Um, uh, I, I, we all have our favorite and least favorite tools, but there are things like Code Runner, which are lovely, but you're absolutely married 
to the code runner infrastructure and you can never ever sort of pull your uh, assignments out of it um you just you just have to stay with them forever so i what i really like here is that the, the nb grader is just a standard you know and probably people will build things similar to nb grader i see another question about the badger uh, and yes my our particular VLE, so Badger, you know, the, this digital badges, you've probably seen people on LinkedIn or otherwise, they share their achievements. Like, oh, I can I can do Excel better now. Uh, uh, dear employers, uh, please look. Um, but also it's been integrated into education quite a bit. So the badges, um, the way I build them in the learning environment, and we're using Learn, Blackburn, Blackburn Learn in the Edmund Uni, uh, the, yeah, the badges are available on Badger, and you pick which ones you wanna you wanna use. Um, I'm very keen to talk about this, but maybe that's a chat for another forum. Um, the R Studio, did you? Sorry, Dave, I totally stole the show, and I'm looking through the the answers. The R Studio server, um, like, and I hopefully you can't hear it, but behind this wall is my partner who teaches R in medicine. Um, and we're designing her courses together to, to work on Notable as well. Um, so that's quite a nice experience uh, of the, it's just it's just the, the usual sort of RStudio cloud interface that you usually have run, running on your own machine, but it just comes through Notable. So again, uh, you, part, you sort of don't care what machine students have. Um, but I think in terms of the, the so RStudio server, yeah, RStudio cloud, I'm not sure how how it works these days, but probably James will be able to answer better. Yeah, what's thank the, you very much. What's the newest in R? Yeah, thank you very much, Pavel. So exactly as you described, um, you can access the R Studio server kind of as expected with Notable, because uh, what what Notable does is it, it essentially takes the R Studio user interface and overlays it on a Jupyter notebook, and then adds an extensive selection of of additional libraries to that. Um, so that means that you have two main methods of accessing R as a programming language with Notable. You can access that. R Studio notebook type when you first launch into Notable and you have that drop down menu to choose what type of notebook you want to launch. Um, and then you can also access R using uh, the actual Jupyter uh, UI, using the actual Jupyter interface. Uh, and that, that can be done with the R with Stand notebook that you can choose from that drop down menu as well. Um, and that also comes with additional libraries that are that are included. And that makes me think that it would be helpful at this point to probably share the descriptions of all our libraries because that just includes some information on, on what's available already out of the box with, with Notable. Um, I see one more question, Pavel, from um, resources available to students that I'll jump on. Mm -hmm. um, so that one's about um, GPUs or CPUs available. So right now we have a standardized um, resource allocation for, for users of Notable. We offer 10 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM per user. Uh, we are in discussions with, um, uh, with infrastructure uh, at the University of Edinburgh to to look at accessing different environment variables and looking to be able to provide um, kind of higher re resource uh, computing power um, types of environments. So if you're interested in that type of of conversation, please do also um, get in touch with us and we can we can speak with you about that. Uh, some examples of uh, sort of the, the the scope in which I've used uh, Notable. I, I wanted to add this as a slide and completely forgot. Um, so I had students run some not that simple machine learning uh, through, through, through Notable. And um, that would be gr a group of 50 students doing it at the same time. And it, it, it didn't crash, uh, if that makes sense. Um, I've, we are also doing some text mining and handling quite big files uh, on it. Um, so probably by talking to the team, you can figure out exactly whether it would work on your requirement for, for sort of memory and gpus and 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 what's not but i am yet to see really uh, where um where it completely crashes and we bring it to its knees so i've been um it, it wasn't a consideration basically so you know this is the benefit of, of having things on a the cloud they it's not like they have to buy another computer and hook it up to the mains they just sort of deploy another virtual you know uh, um, flotilla of of, of computers um, so, so, so far, so good. Um, also, the really nice benefit, and this is this is a, a funny thing. Most of my courses use external data sources, so we would be pinging like NHS data about stuff, or we would be accessing API, you know, like an online data resource, uh, sort of like to get weather or to get bus times and train sort of uh, delays. Um, so, depending where a student is, you know, in student accommodation at their home on a bus, they might be blocked by some sort of 
firewalls, some sort of protection, some sort of parental controls, whatever. Um, or even their antivirus software might block some sort of uh, online activity. While here on Notable, uh, it all happens through their server. So suddenly that's like another layer of headache that is just uh, completely removed. Um, there is a question here from Kim um, about, or Jan, um, uh, about moving to post notebook uh, world. That's quite a good one. Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of writing two more badges right now for the course I'm delivering next year um, about also coding in, in a not notebook environment. Um, Notable does have a way for you to just code in Python. So you can open files, you can edit files, you can run them. Currently, there is some uh, um, uh, terminal, uh, like you can open terminal, you know, this sort of matrix world, um, and you, you can do everything in it. Uh, so I don't think there's like a built-in um, coding environment, like a Visual Studio code or something within that space. But looking at the speed of development of how these, these folk are building stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if one day, uh, inst instead of just Python, R, Stata, and what of the other ones are available, we could have some sort of uh, virtual machine. There's another question from Benoit uh, that's probably to uh, to James, to your team. Yep, it's, I think that um, Anna is already jumping on oh, that one from, awesome. um, from, from the chess side. Um, yeah, just confirming that there are six bands of pricing. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more information um, you might want to share, Anna, in terms of Okay, I've actually I've got a screenshot of the pricing that I could show if that's okay. If you're right with that quickly, or I can just I'll basically I'll talk it through actually. Um, so there were six bands of pricing. Um, the first is one to fifty users, then fifty one to one hundred, one hundred and one to two hundred, two hundred and one to three fifty, three five one to five hundred, and then over five hundred. Um, and as it said in the chat, the lowest banding, which is one to 50 users, comes in at about 50 pounds per user per year. Um, when you get over 500 users, it's dropped to about 20 pounds per user per year. And you can sign up for one year or for three years at a time. And just to, to um, uh, mention something that you mentioned at the beginning, Anna, that each user would have access for a year subscription uh, for that pricing. Um, or, or there's a possible three-year tier um, that they have access to as well. That's correct, yeah. Cool, cool. So I think that should hopefully answer your question, Benoit, about um, licensing and, and what that looks like in terms of, uh, of setting up a subscription. Um, and Pavel, thank you for jumping on the questions before that. I can't see any um, any other questions that we haven't uh, jumped on. There's, some, there's, there's a bunch of raised hands in the room. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, yes that, that's what I was... Um, Picking on next, I see that uh, that Mark has a raised hand and Benoit as well. Um, oh, and another one just. So you, uh, James, you're the MC. You tell people who is next, and you tell them. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, just that um, there, were, there was another. Well, there was the chaos. But uh, Benoit, please, um, please go ahead. We'll we'll go in alphabetical okay. order. Keep it uh, very it, different. It, thanks. It's actually Ken. Um, ben, Benoit is my last name, but. Um, oh, sorry. On the pricing okay. question, so it's it, that's the price per user. But if we were to teach a half unit module, um, uh, if we have a module in programming that we repeat um, uh, twice each year. Would would the per user be attached to the student, or would be that something something that we would be able to reassign to a student in the next iteration of the of the module? So, I think at the moment the named user license sits with one student for the whole of that year. Um, if you've got a three-year license, you can reallocate at each anniversary. Each anniversary meaning each? Me each annual anniversary. So you could oh. allocate at the beginning of one year for a set number of students, and then those licenses could be reallocated at the end of that first year, Thank which you. obviously doesn't kind of fit with you <laughs> wanting to, I realise, but um, that's how it sits at the moment. Um, I'm thinking, and it might be possible because we have had some some examples that um, wh where a course wasn't exactly one year or wasn't exactly three years. So it might be possible to look at something like a half a year um, kind of a subscription setup that can be transferred over to another okay. setup with a different cohort, perhaps. But uh, but that would be kind of a conversation we can have on a more one-to-one -one, um, 
basis and, can. And we're always amenable to amendments to make it more flexible. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Mark with a question. Yep, you have a raised hand, Mark. Oh, um, go ahead. Thank you. Might have been an accidental raised hand. Not sure. Uh, I have some answers to the other questions that are popping in in the, in the uh, chat. There's a question about Octave and Cas Maxima, uh, and these are just just uh, other programming languages. Um, so I know that it's 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 totally possible for the notable team to just add another kernel, like another you know another type of computer that you can virtually start. Um, there's at least I know that in within business school there's some people using um, Notable to work with languages I haven't even heard about. Um, that it will depend whether the particular language or a kernel, you know, the, the brain of the language, whether it's uh, open source or not, whether it's paid or not. But I know they worked with, I can't remember the name of it, you might remember. Um, it's it, There's a language, possibly Stata, uh, something that is a paid kernel. So, and somehow Business School and Notable figured out how to have these available to students. Uh, so it does work. Uh, there's another question from Mark about user data. So yeah, what what I do, I basically um, I give students uh, an ability to there's a, there's a sort of a notebook uh, and now export all of the stuff. And what this our notebook does, it zips all of the notes and all of the writings and all of the exercises of that of you of you a particular student, and gives you ability to just download them onto your own computer, sort of to take it with you into the into the world. Uh, but also at the end, I teach students how to install something called Anaconda, which is uh, it also allows you to run Jupyter notebooks, but on your own machine, uh, you know, offline and when you're at home and whatnot. So, so yeah, again, the the philosophy is to not bound you by force um, to to this to this system. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pavel. I'm just going to jump on um, oh. Kenji's question about the roadmap. Um, and asking what some of the main roadmap items might be aside from the VLE grade passback development. Um, so just to speak to some of what the current development is, uh, we're working on um, collaborative notebooks as a feature. So right now we have um, collaborative notebooks and multiple markers using um, the, the grading features as opt-in features that you can um, just come to us and request access to, and we can work with you in terms of setting it up, making sure that you have uh, the information that you need in terms of, of how the changes are gonna affect your um, your teaching workflow, perhaps, and and you know what's available to you now with multiple markers, you'll be able to have uh, many, uh, you know, essentially limitless instructors. Even though we put it, probably wouldn't recommend having limitless instructors access a course and and um, be able to work on assignments together on Notable. Um, and then with with collaborative notebooks, you'll be able to uh, log into Notable, essentially choose with a checkbox whether you'd like the notebook to be collaborative or not, and then be able to exchange that notebook as if it were essentially a Google Doc file. Um, where you can share a link with with each other. And uh, Pavel, you already spoke to this in terms of your pair programming examples. It'll be it'll be similar to that, um, but we'll be able to offer it to all users uh, in just a couple of click buttons. Uh, is the is the idea there? So those I are the two so main. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, it, sh it should be it should be great. And we have um, yep. a number of requests that have come in, and um, and the tests so far are very very exciting for how it's being used to to manage all kinds of different workshop type scenarios. Um, and managing different types of, of setups for courses and for classes. Um, aside from that, we're making a continuous refinements to Notable in terms of, of stability and efficiency. Of course, um, we're also going to be updating a number of the associated technologies with Notable, like the learning tool uh, interoperability um, technology that Notable uses to link into virtual learning environments. We're going to update that, which will, which will enable new types of uh, deep linking uh, and will move us along towards that type of great passback functionality. Um, so those are the uh, main roadmap items that we're um, we're hard at work at, and um, and we're of course happy to kind of keep sharing some of uh, the news of these developments. And we have a newsletter coming out as well uh, that if you're interested in signing up uh, and getting updates um, on these features and other notable news as well, um, well we can share that information. Um, so there's, hopefully there's that, that answers that question. Sorry, Pablo, go ahead. The, there's a question that maybe you've already answered from Jim Smith. Um, that that uh, the no sorry from uh, from Ken again about R Studio and grading and stuff uh, because NB Grader that's Jupyter specific right yeah absolutely um for the time being NB Grader is Jupyter specific um, we are working on um, going back to that R with Stan 
uh, use of VR programming languages using Jupyter. We are looking into using Jupyter Lab for grading with R STEM um, as a programming language. So uh, you know we'll, we'll keep you updated on how those developments are going. But for the time being and for the present, um, the integration doesn't currently work with our studio just because of the uh, of the dependencies involved. There's a question about security of data related to students. I'm not sure if this is a GDPR question. Uh, oh yes, absolutely. So we have a, uh, and thanks, Paolo, for for noting that we have a privacy policy available on the um, Notable website, as well as a data retention statement, uh, which includes the information on how we manage all data flows through Notable. Um, and one of the the nice things about the setup of Notable is that so much of that information is directly managed through the virtual learning environment that it's actually a very secure um, data flow. And it's all saved and managed through University of Edinburgh secure infrastructure as well. I'll just share links to the privacy notice and the data retention policy uh, if that's helpful. Nice. One of the nice thing in this whole arrangement was that the students did not need another login and another password and another you know account. It just went through VLE, which is lovely. Um, there's a question about GitHub. You mentioned GitHub links. Is there a similar GitHub integration to other services? E.g. institutional GitLab instance. That's a question to you. Yep, thank you, Ian. Uh, great question, and the answer would be yes, and that's very much what is being used for our own uh, coding and development processes for Notable. Um, also, recently, what's been added to uh, to Notable, which is, I just noticed like yesterday, uh, it used to be that you could only clone public repos, uh, which meant that by their nature, the notes had to be sort of at least not quite creative comments, but they had to be in the open. But now you can actually, there's a built-in login through GitHub uh, into that that button that I, I um, uh, love so much into get me the most recent GitHub notes. So that's uh, that's being built. And also th these things are up, up appearing every month. So that's grand. Yeah, it's definitely a, a fast changing world um, in the open source community. Um, let's see, I'm just going to see if there's any questions we might have missed scrolling up a little bit. Uh, but yes, thank you, Anna, for clarifying the question about the, the pricing as well on the website. So moving onwards before we finish, uh, if someone uh, is considering teaching uh, this way, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send this, my slides uh, to, to the team so they can share it around, but also I'm, I'm always open. Uh, to talk to people if you're on a fence or if you have certain sort of worries and fears about it. The nice thing is I'm not like part of Notable team and they, <laughs> they so I, I have no business in, in them flourishing, if that makes sense, a part of the fact that uh, that I couldn't build my courses without it. So um, I'm really happy to share 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 the, the, the particular hacks and tools of the trade. Um, and I hope it's going to uh, be a good journey for you. Thank you so much, Pavel. So yes, we, we can group um, your slides and, uh, and our uh, slides with contact information together and, and share that. Um, I think, yeah, that would, that would be fantastic, uh, especially with your beautifully uh, virtually drawn uh, illustrations on your slides. Absolutely love those. And, um, and we'll also be sharing uh, the link to the recording for the session, uh, which we'll be uploading to the YouTube channel and uh, maybe also sharing through some, uh, some chest uh, channels. Anna, that you might want to to touch on. Um, and just before we we close off, I wanted to definitely thank everybody again for for joining us this morning, and a huge thank you to Pavel as well for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, I think um, Anna, is there anything else that we might want to to run through? Um, no, I think you've covered it all, James. Just to say thank you to you and the Adina team and to Pavel, Pavel for providing this. It's been really interesting. Thank you. 